This is Carvera, a new desktop CNC mill from MakeEra, which has been released as a Kickstarter campaign. It's designed for milling PCBs, plastic, acrylic, aluminium, reliefs, and 3D carving. A pre-production model was sent to me free of charge for this review. It's packed with interesting features, including an automatic tool changer, a wireless height probe, a laser, fully enclosed case, and built-in dust extraction. For accuracy, the axes run on linear rails. They're driven by closed loop server motors and ball screw linear actuators. The spindle is belt driven by a 200 watt brushless motor. Carvera comes with a 1 8 of an inch or 3.175 millimeter tool clamp. Four millimeter, six millimeter and quarter inch clamps can also be fitted with the included tool. To work with the automatic tool changing system, bits have to be fitted with plastic collars. Spare collars and an installation tool are provided. To maintain the optimum height, the dust shoe runs on a spring-loaded linear rail. It can also be locked out of the way or removed entirely. The dust is collected in a dust box with an internal filter. There's also an adjustable nozzle for chip clearing and cooling. A compressor can be attached to the pipe connector on the back of the machine. The machine is managed by a controller which runs a modified version of SmoothieWare. It also provides USB and Wi-Fi connectivity and it runs G-code directly for an SD card for greater reliability. The machine measures 58 centimeters wide, 52 centimeters deep, and 54 centimeters high. The work area is 36 centimeters by 24 centimeters with a 14 centimeter Z-axis height. L-shaped brackets and clamps are provided for work holding. The L bracket is fixed to a predefined anchor position, anchor one or anchor two, and the L brackets and clamps are selected to suit different material sizes. Although this is a desktop machine, it's quite heavy, weighing in at 50 kilograms or 110 pounds. Makera provides software to send G-code to the machine and control it. It's compatible with Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, and Linux. The fold-out arm is provided to mount a mobile phone or tablet with power provided by a USB socket. So without further ado, let's plug in the power and connect the USB lead to a laptop. I'm going to install the software on Windows 10. There are three different ways of connecting to the machine from the Carvera software. Firstly via USB. Secondly via Carvera's built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. The third method is to connect Carvera directly to your local Wi-Fi network. Carvera have pre-installed several examples on the SD card. The first is an edge lit LED light. I'm going to start with the PCB. The example files can be accessed from the file management menu in the examples directory. The G code is displayed on the screen and you can rotate, zoom, etc. The origin position can be changed by clicking config. Anchor one is selected with an X offset of 15 and a Y offset of 10. Scan margin draws a rectangle around the path area using the laser in the wireless probe. The laser can also be turned on or off by double tapping the tip. Auto Z probe sets the Z axis height of the workpiece. Normally the path origin is selected and I'm going to apply an X and Y offset of five. And finally auto leveling. This uses the wireless probe to test the height of the material in a matrix pattern, creating a height map, which is then used to machine the material to a consistent depth. This is important in PCB milling because to obtain fine traces, a V-bit is used to mill the copper layer. The copper layer is very thin and despite appearances, the PCB board is not flat. And without auto leveling, even a small variation in the height will change the width of the cut. I'm going to set the matrix to five by five with a clearance height of two millimeters. The machine picks up the wireless probe from the tool rack And then it touches off against the tool touch sensor to set its correct tool length offset. The laser indicator draws a rectangle around the path area, which is a useful visual indication of where it's going to mill. The probe then touches off against the surface of the PCB board to zero the Z axis, and then in a matrix to create a height map. The probe is dropped back into the tool rack. The red light looks for obstructions and checks that the tool position is occupied. And then tool number one is picked up. The tool is a 60 degree 0.1 millimeter V-bit. The tool is touched off against the touch sensor and the tool length offset calculated. The spindle is turned on and it starts cutting the traces in the PCB material.
The tool is then changed to a 30 degree 0.2 millimeter V bit. It's touched off against the touch sensor and the new tool length offset applied. This time it's clearing some wide areas of copper. Next we're going to apply a solder mask and to allow easy access to the PCB I'm moving the axes to the clearance position. The copper is cleaned and then it's a good idea to check the tracks for continuity and shorts. Next the UV solder mask is applied and rolled flat and then the UV light is used to cure the solder mask. Next we're going to engrave the silk screen on the solder mask using the laser. We've already probed and leveled so we can turn those options off. Tool 2 is dropped. And then the empty tool holder is touched off against the touch sensor. And from this the machine can set the correct height offset for the laser. The laser is a variable focus which was set up in the factory and you don't normally need to change it. Next we're going to clear the solder mask from the copper pads using a spring loaded engraving tool. And finally the tool is changed for an 0.8mm corn bit to mill the holes and cut out the board. I cut out the tabs with a Dremel. And soldered it. Next is the base for the edge lit light. A square of hardboard is used as a spoil board. This time the work origin offset is set to X15 and Y20. Again it picks up the wireless probe touches off against the touch sensor draws a square around the path area with the laser pointer probes the material to set the z-axis zero point 
and also probes a matrix to create a height map. Next it picks up tool 4, which is a 3.175mm or 1 8th of an inch single flute spiral bit. Sets the tool length offset and starts milling. The reason for the mess is that I forgot to drop down the dust shoe cover. Next it changes to tool 2, which is a 30 degree V-bit. Then it changes back to the single flute bit. The dust shoe picked up quite a few chips. I cut out the tabs with a Dremel and then filed those areas flat. The next part of the edge lit light is the acrylic display. Hardboard is used as a spoil board. They've included a few image options. I'm going to try R2D2. The work origin offset is set to X15 Y25. The Z probe is left at X5 Y5. And the auto leveling matrix is set to 5x5 with a 2mm clearance height. It picks up tool 2, which is a 30 degree 0.2 millimeter V bit. Then it engraves the R2D2 image. It changes to tool 4, which is a 3.175mm or 1 8th of an inch single flute spiral bit. And then it cuts out the display.
The final part of the LED edge lit light is a touch plate, which is milled from 6mm or quarter inch thick 6061 aluminium. The work origin offset is X10 Y10. The Z probe offset is left at X5 Y5 and the auto leveling matrix is set to 3x3 with a 2mm clearance height. Notice that I haven't installed tool 5 properly. Let's see what happens. It picks up tool 5, which is a 3.175mm or 1 8 of an inch single flute spiral bit. Now we can assemble the light. And switch it on. Next is engraving an image with the laser. It's a 2.5 watt diode laser which is suitable for engraving. It will also cut some materials with a slower feed rate and multiple passes. Diode lasers are limited to directly engraving opaque materials and not transparent acrylic and glass. It's a variable focus laser, but once it's set up, you don't normally need to touch it. And this one was set up in the factory. The empty tool holder is touched off against the touch sensor to set the laser height and then it burns the image. Light burn can be used to create G-code for the carve error. First the make error device is imported and then the COM port and the make error device are selected. Laser mode can be switched on with the M321 command which touches off the empty tool holder against the touch sensor to set the height of the laser. As we're operating outside of the carve error software we have to be really careful about not sending the Z-axis crashing into the tool changer. We can send the axes over to the origin with G0, X0, Y0 and set the laser to the correct height with G0, Z0. We can then create a simple design in Lightburn. I'm putting the text and box in two separate layers. If we open the layer tab we can assign different speeds and power to each layer. We can press start.
the M322 command exits laser mode. If we have a look in the device settings, the commands are already inserted into the G code start and end scripts. But as I said earlier, if you start the job directly from Lightburn without moving the axis into the correct position, it will probably crash the tool changer. The script could be changed to do this, but a better option is to create a G code file from Lightburn and then send it to the machine with the Carvera software. So we can save the G code. Then upload the file to Carvera's SD card. Select the file. and run it. Although the process is a bit slower, it's a much safer environment and you're much less likely to damage the machine. Next I'm going to try relief carving on epoxy board. Unfortunately I forgot to install a spoil board. You can see the results of that later. The work origin offset is X3Y3. Z probe offset is X5Y5 and we don't need any auto leveling. First, the 3.175mm or 1 8 of an inch single flute spiral bit is selected for the roughing pass. Then an 0.2mm 30 degree V bit is selected for the finishing pass.
And finally back to the spiral bit for the cutout. Okay, so the epoxy board carved really easily, but I had to wear a dust mask even with the dust extraction on. Now I'm going to try out the fourth axis. There's a socket for it on the side of the table bed. The cable's plugged in and then into the stepper motor. Then it's attached to the table with six screws. The dust collector interferes with the fourth axis, so it's removed. Then a block of epoxy material is inserted into the chuck and secured with the tailstock. A couple of tools are provided to tighten the chuck. Two of the bits are changed for different sizes. The G-code for the rough pass is loaded with an offset of X60, Y0 in relation to the fourth axis origin. The Z probe position is fixed and auto leveling is disabled. The z-axis is zeroed at the fixed position on the fourth axis. And then a 3.175mm single flute spiral bit is selected. Next the G-code for the finish pass is selected. We don't need scan margin and Z-probe. A 2mm ball nose bit is selected. Okay, so that was a first look at the machine. Overall, I'm really impressed. It's solidly built with linear rails, ball screws, and servo motors for accuracy, and some great features like the tool changer, wireless probe, anchor point system, and dust extraction.
If you're interested, Carvera is available as a Kickstarter, but please bear in mind that Kickstarter is not a store. Backers pledge money to help bring projects to life, and in return they're offered rewards, but there are no guarantees. So I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching, and see you again next time.